Hi everyone, I am going to be doing a um, picture today from Minor Riser de Europa by Rita Berman. Um, I'm just showing you this page. This is a page that I've done already from the book um, and I used um, Bambino um, Jumbo pencils for this page. And what I decided I'm going to do is to have a go with one of the images from this page and use the same pencils. I thought it would be fun. Now, this is split into different sections. This is quite a big piece at the bottom. I'm going to start at the top, I think, and just work my way through. So we're going to zoom in as much as we can. There we go. And do this picture in the top corner. I'm just trying to move the book so that um, I've got a tripod on my desk and, uh, and it's right against it. But I think we can do this top corner piece okay now we've obviously got a house picture here so but i want to do something really bright and cheery not just a sort of normal colored house so i'm just going to grab a couple of um of the jumbo um pencils and get going now these um are very big if you look at them compared to the size of my finger so i do have to use a big sharpener for them so i use my Stedler Norris Club sharpener. I'm not sure if that's going to go into focus or not. I'm still playing with my new camera. And I use the large hole here rather than the little one. And it just about works. It um, does strip off a little bit of the paint. It goes a little bit jagged. But it, the pencils come with a sharpener, which is the perfect size. But it hasn't got a barrel on. And so lazy old me likes to collect the sharpenings. So that's why I picked this one. I'm going to start with this little building on the front. Oh, you can't see how. That's better. And I'm going to do it in two shades of these sort of dark pink. So I'm going to start around the edge with this dark colour. I'm going to apply it in a little circular motion because I want to gently fade it so that the centre of the building is lighter in colour than the outside. I think it just makes it look more fun and more interesting and more colourful. So I'm just getting gentle as I go towards the middle, you see, because I want to fade out this colour. It's quite a harsh colour, this. And then go on to this pink colour. Unfortunately, this set of crayons doesn't have a name. Um, I mean, the pencils don't have names or numbers on them, so I can't tell you what they are precisely. I can just tell you that it's pink or whatever. So I'm going over the darker colour, as you can see, blending that in to, uh, to this lighter colour. Hopefully that's going to give a nice effect. I find these maybe need two, three layers to uh, really work on this paper, which is pretty good actually. It's nice to have a bit of um, ability to layer up, but not you don't want to have to lay down millions of layers, perhaps. <laughs> it looks very raspberry-like, I think, but I'm quite pleased with that. I like that colour. So now I want something for the around the window and under the roof. Oof. Um, I am going to go for a, yeah, let's go for a purple colour. I've got two shades of purple. I'm just trying to get them out of the box. Now this one with the lighter barrel is actually the darker purple. And this is the lighter one when, they, when they're drawn with. I'm going to use this slightly lighter shade for around the window. And the roof. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to sharpen that straight in my book. Oh, it's, I need to weight it down, really. There we go. Okay. And do under the roof line. Now, this camera doesn't focus in quite as much as my last one. But I think it's okay. But you'll have to, I mean, I can't really do anything about it. And I'm going to use this one for the roof. So uh, it's just 
I just feel like I'm not quite as zoomed in as I have been in the past but I hope that's okay hopefully you can still clearly see what I'm doing so I'm putting more layers on the edge of the roof sorry if my voice is a bit muffled I'm, I'm hiding behind the tripod leg to see what I'm doing here I'm still yet to find a really good way of putting the tripod on my desk so it all works. Now here, at this point, I could do all of the houses the same as this one. So they're all this, but I'm going to do all of them different. I think it's just fun. Um, it might look a big mishy mashy mess, but we'll find out, won't we? So I'm going to start with a red, red, whoops red and orange. I'm going to use the same sort of technique as I did for this one for this house. Now these look like they've got adjoining roofs, I'm not sure. So I'm going to do the red around the edge and then the orange in towards the centre. Oops, I'm trying not to go too far over the line. Don't ask me what I'm going to do for the window frames, I'm just wondering about that myself. Now I've picked my darkest red I really haven't got anywhere to go, but maybe a brown might work. So, uh, go all the way around the edge with a nice dark layer, and then start to circle and drag that colour out towards the centre, getting lighter with your pressure and just adding less layers as you go. I feel like somehow this book needs lots of bright colours. I don't know if you felt the same. So this is the darkest orange in my box. I'm going to go all the way over, take that colour in towards the middle. Yeah, I just feel like it needs lots of jolly bright colours. And uh, these um, pencils are very good for that. Although there's only 24 and we do have a silver and gold which aren't always right for all pictures. They are great fun to use though. Um, but you can mix colours up together any way they blend well, they mix well. So that's really good. And they just lay down nicely on this paper. I will try other pencils on this paper too. But I've just been using a big set. And I just fancied something smaller. Partly for ease of on my desk. It takes up less room. Whoops way over the edge there. There we go. I'm going to just erase that little bit in the window here where I went over the edge. This is my Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. There we go. So you can see, I don't know if this is going to focus properly. I think I had it on a funny setting last time, it wasn't wanting to focus. So I'm going to grab the lightest brown colour which is this one, and do the window frames. And the inside here, this isn't really a window frame, is it? This is the inside of the room. It could sort of be any colour, really. I hope it's not too noisy for you. I've got the door open. It's really warm today. We're having a sort of strange hot spell here in the UK, and so all the traffic is going by, and people are... Um, doing their gardening and things, not that I blame them, but um, it's a bit noisy. Okay, I'm going to take three shades of blue for my next one. Whoops. One of the blues is a bluey green, so I've avoided that one, so I've got these three. And I am going to save the very darkest for my um, roof, and these two for the house. Um, I'm going to start with this one, it's slightly darker. So this is the mid blue, and do the edge. I really like this colour lovely it's very it's a very vibrant blue it doesn't even feel that cold blues usually cold color I feel like because it's so bright it just doesn't feel cold maybe I'm not making much sense but really. so all the way around and then the um, the lighter one the rest of the house. Now, if there are any specific pictures from this Rita Berman, Rita Berman book that you would like me to do, 
do um, leave a comment in the video and I'll see what I can do. It's nice to have some ideas, although obviously there's loads of pictures in the book I can just choose really easily. Now we're going for the darkest blue. Um, it's nice to be able to do things that you want me to do, so you can let me know. Um, this is the only one of her books I have at the moment though. Um, oh, we need to do the underside of the roof here. So this is the only, as I say, it's the only one of her books that has to be from this one. Okay, and this is the greeny blue I was talking about. I'm going to do that for the roof because I've run out of other colours. And it's a very pretty colour. It is lighter, so it doesn't quite work um, with the sort of schemey set up down here. But I'm doing the same thing where I'm making it darker on the edges lighter towards the middle just as if it's catching the light a little bit in the middle now we need some green we only have the two greens but we can improvise with our greens so we've got a dark and a light so i'm going to do the main building with these two so darker around the edges just the same as before it's quite fun once you get if you're doing things in a certain way and you can just follow the same pattern with your next one and your next one it makes it more relaxing you have to think about what you're doing you just have to pick a color and go for it obviously you can just pick my colors and follow me you don't have to use this brand you know any any greens any blues whatever should all work well and now we've got the lighter one as with the others I'm going to go over the top of what I've done and then just draw that color towards the middle one thing I find that's really interesting with these clay pencils is that they don't shine. So most pencils, oily and waxy pencils, will have a real sheen to them. It means when you're looking at your picture in the light, it can reflect that light and uh, that can make it harder to see what you're doing. But these never do that, which can be quite handy. Now, for the roof and the other details, I want darker green. Now to make darker green, you add blue. So I'm going to use the lightest blue here for the window frame. And the sill and this top bit and the detailing. So this is all even, there's no shading in this bit. I've just kept it even. I think the colour then stands out and speaks for itself. You can shade these. And I'm going to use the light green. No, I'm not. <laughs> use the dark green to go over the top. And you'll see it will transform that blue into a green. But a different shade to the ones we've used already. You can do that this with other colours as well if you know your colour wheel. Um, I do have a copy of one somewhere, which I rarely use, but I probably should. Um, so we know that um, I'm going to go for a dark blue on the roof. And now I have to remember to use this shading pattern, even with my under colour. So we know that um, with our primaries, red and yellow make orange, and blue and yellow make green, and red and green make purple. And then we can combine other colours as well. So I'm going to go over the, the green. And you can play with that if you want to um, work it out. Buy yourself a colour wheel or look online um, at pictures of them. You don't have to buy one. And uh, just check it all out and see what works. Because two colours that combine together. I'm just going to use my rubber because I've got a bit of blue up here. I don't want if two colors combine together like to make purple pink and blue make purple that means blue and pink are going to go with purple so that's that makes it easy now in the windows we're going to do a nice yellow nice and warming so here's the yellow fill in the spaces Nice and simple, just lovely and bright. And putting, making them all the same just um, draws them all together, doesn't it? They look nice and bright and vibrant, which was always the idea. 
and we've got these sort of roofy areas on top now I'm not sure I'm just looking at what I have got left and what I might do I think I'm gonna do a bit of a different color on each one just to make them nice I'm gonna use this red because it doesn't really show up because under this orange I'm gonna make a really deep vibrant red for this one I don't know what I mean you might know what this is supposed to be in her I might be doing it completely wrong but I'm thinking it's just a pattern so I'm just gonna make it vibrant but you know you don't have to uh, do it this way and it could be an extension of a roof which I thought as well but then I that would in my head roofs are grey it's quite boring isn't it I didn't want a dull grey so I'm going to do that red and now I'm going to grab the dark brown which is like this and do this higher bit We might fade to grey and black, I think, just to try and keep the focus down on the houses. But then we've got some black there already. Hmm. Okay, that's our brown. I think what I'll do... I've got several colours left, actually. I'm going to do a grey here. Someone's radio outside. And someone's doing some sort of hedge trimming or lawn mowing or something. I think it's our last little hot spell of the summer. So uh, everyone's making the most of it. And what I'm going to do is grab that silver and do this wide area here in silver. It's just a bit of fun. So this one does shine a bit more. I don't know how much you can see it, it depends how close, how well tipped it is towards the light it is rather pretty I used it on the facing page here um, for the on the ice cream there are little circles and I thought hmm, they're they those um, very nasty in my opinion hard silver balls which take your fillings out and break your teeth um, Thought they might be those they're very pretty but i just never eat them so if, when i used to eat cake which i don't anymore um if they were on there i would um, just leave them on the side um gold i'm gonna do the last bit in gold except it doesn't want to come out of the box there we go there's the gold can you see the top you can now around this whole page there is a border this edge now you could colour that in as well um, if you wanted. Um, I would tend to leave it until the end and see what works, what might, what colour might tie it all together, or whether it looks better framed in white. If you colour it in too early, you can't take that colour away. There we go. I think I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to try to think of what I'm going to call the video. So I've got already got two videos called Rainbow Houses. I have to call them, call it something else. You'll know already because I would have already named it. I'm just touching up a few bits where I've missed, and now I've done other layers of colour. I can see that it needs a bit of touching up. It's uh, this fiddle fiddling stage is often uh, can go on for a while if you're fussy. And you want it looking just so. I've used nearly all of the pencils that we've got. Now these do come in a 12 set as well as the 24 I think. I think. So you may not have all of these um, colours but uh, you should be able to blend them together, mix them up and get some nice effects. There we go, I am done now. 
So that is our pretty house picture. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun and enjoyed it and happy colouring.